Hello, everybody. We are going to talk about the approach to measure and uh, reduce kernel latency from the perspective of real-time system development. And uh, in the present, in this talk, we uh, discuss the latency, which means the time after test is invoked and before it is is good. And uh, uh, we are talking about the detail where the latency come from. Also, we are uh, introduce uh, microscope measurements by efficient way to visualize system latency. The major target uh, in our real-time system is pre and RT. Uh, but I think uh, the, the idea can be reused by other real-time extension like Xenomai. Uh, in the finally, we are we will analyze and reduce the latency using Cortex A9 multi-core, for example. So, uh, pre rt itself is an approach to minimize uh, Linux intra latencies uh, from external event to to response. So the latency consists of several parts. So the first one is uh, before the interrupt is really react, you have to handle the critical section, uh, which which might disable interrupt. And uh, you, you have to wait for wait the time from the hardware to react to interrupt. Also, in the design of Linux interrupt, uh, there is a top hell and a bottom hell. So this, this part is critical. Uh, also, you, the, the time to wake up uh, uh, usually involves uh, lock, RCU, and, uh, and so on. Then you have to handle the button help, which means um, stop IRQ and, and other potential synchronization. So uh, in, in the last part, you have to handle the schedule. So uh, what does preemptive kernel means? It, it implies the control of latency to allow the kernel to be preemptible anywhere. And uh, the kernel preemption increases responsibility, but, also, but in other side, it decreases the throughput. Uh, we ma mentioned preemption uh, to, be, to be the ability to interrupt the task at many preemption points. So you can compare with the, the two diagrams. Uh, the first one has longer latency, but if you you can insert more preemption points, we we can uh, get the sh the shorter latency, and the longer non preemptible program use, the longer waiting time and uh, the uncertainty comes. So the idea of, about pre pre NRT is to make system code preemptible. As as well, even in, in the context of system code. <clears throat> so if you check the, the diagram, uh, you can see uh, if you turn off pre pre kernel preemption, uh, the kernel only preempts in user space. In other words, preemption is not allowed in kernel mode when, when your kernel is configured with uh, preemption disabled. Pre so uh, you can see uh, from the diagram, uh, inter account handling itself is is always the mo most most uh, important highest priority task, and and uh, you can see from the diagram as well the the so IRQ uh, and the other kernel thread are the secondary. So if you enable the preemption uh, configuration in your kernel, uh, for example, the, the, the first one is to insert pre explicit preemption point in kernel uh, by introduce my sleep. So kernel can be preempted only at preemption point. Uh, if you configure your kernel with configure pre preempts, uh, which 
insert a uh, more preemption point and uh, do implicit preemption. So uh, preemption could happen when the preemption count gets zero. And the, the, the fi finally, the configuration of preempt RT4 uh, is to re reduce non preemptable uh, case in kernel. Uh, here, here we, we, into, we care about the spin lock and the interrupts context. So you can see from the diagram, almost every pass can be preemptable in, in, in this kernel, kernel configuration. And, and if you compare with uh, the original one, uh, I mean to turn off the preemption in kernel, and, and compare with uh, preempt RT, uh, you, can, you can see the so IRQ itself is gone. So so IRQ is removed in preempt RT configuration, uh, where case so IRQD is implement as a normal kernel thread, which handles all sub IRQs. So IRQ runs from the context, who rest from them. And uh, there are more system management thread, uh, such as RC Watchdog, uh, case of IRQD, and the past CPU timer. Uh, you can check the SN talk by Steven Luster last, that, last year. Uh, if, you if you check the implementation of pre and RT, uh, you can see all, all the spin lock IRQ set uh, is replaced uh, with spin lock. And uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, pre and RT itself already changed the implementation. So the real implementation is here. Uh, a new RT spin lock, which is sleepable. <coughs> so if we talk about how to measure the latency, uh, we have to consider several conditions, several scenarios. The first scenario is wake up. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, the latency consists of several paths uh, for hardware, IRQ, uh, and schedule, and the finally the test get a response. <coughs> so in Linux, Linux interval handling um, is quite a, quite a tricky. Interval hand controller send a hardware signal, and the uh, process switch to switch more uh, from the original mode, like use more, uh, and the bank, banking register, and disable IRQ. Um, generic interval vector call is called and uh, save the context of interval activity. So uh, the, the last part is to identify which interval happened and uh, cause relevant IRQ service. So uh, in this scenario, you can see the task two is I mean, the execution of task two is get delayed uh, because of external event. Another scenario is uh, wake up on idle CPU. Uh, it takes time to wake up the CPU uh, by means of IPI, which means inter-processor interrupts. So it takes time from, from the more CPU from idle to run it. Uh, it's, it's a get a, a problem of a potential latencies. So schedule needs to put a uh, wake up task, otherwise in, interval increase. Uh, so we have to think about how, how, to we, how can we reduce the latency in this condition. Uh, we, the first one is uh, you can think about uh, the arrangement of process priority. Lower priority task uh, weighs on the IRQ, while the higher priority task give, give, given TPU. And uh, you can change the scheduling policy uh, 
for example, uh, schedule FIFO and a long robin always schedule before uh, schedule other or, or batch. So uh, let's back to the measurement. Uh, we want to introduce an efficient way to perform microscope uh, measurement. So we think about the, the several items. Uh, the first one is a class source and a high resolution timer, uh, which you, we, we usually, usually uh, mention it as HRT. Uh, HRT uh, is, is a quite critical uh, because of it consists it, it in introduced the hardware and the software interrupt uh, for the currency. So timer interrupt are not not uh, response uh, when system is all loaded and uh, it causes more t uh, time and latency in kernel. And the next one is uh, t test switching cost. As, as you know, a process switch is always heavy than th th switching. Uh, process switching needs, uh, needs to flush TLB. If your real-time equation consists of lots of process, process switching measurement is, is necessary. And also, we think about uh, patch faults. Initial memory access costs patch four, and it costs more latency. Um, and the patch out swap area co also costs patch faults. Uh, you can use uh, a system called MLAC O and uh, replace the original memory locator with uh, your customized one. So uh, as you might know, there is there are some real time space allocator like TLSF. And uh, also we think about the issue of multi cores. Uh, Tests can, can move from local core to remote core, and uh, this migration causes additional latency. Uh, so you can fix the problem by, uh, by using CPU set. Or Specify the CPU, C groups. The final one is uh, is lock. Uh, as I mentioned before, a uh, spin lock already replaced by RT mutex, which can sleep. Um, spin lock must not used in atomic path. Uh, that is preempt disable or local IRQ set. RT mutex use a priority inheritance. It not just a mutex. It implement the protocol of priority inheritance to prevent from priority uh, invention. And uh, it is no longer just few text. Uh, I mean, the fast mutex. So as a result, the lux, the cost of the, the new lux uh, get, get higher in, in general. So uh, before we do the real measurement, we have to prepare workload in order to simulate and uh, figure out the problem. Uh, there are many tools you can use. Uh, we just pick out some. Uh, the, the, first, the first one is the famous one, is a headbench. Headbench itself is a tool, a, 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 a just a single source tool to test the schedule and the unit socket performance by spawning process and thread. And the next one is uh, stress. Stress is uh, a tool. Um, you, can, you can use it to normalize the, the data. Uh, to get, I mean, you, the data made, made from the system and I give an overview of system impact of, of each kernel. Uh, I, at least, uh, uh, fantastic link in the, the reference parts. So you can compare various kind of versions. And the, 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 the last one is our in-house pre-Arctic task, uh, which evaluates robot control algorithm. Uh, this is, is part is, is a real product and already uh, in use. 
in some uh, China, China factory. So uh, MC test itself is our our, our customized by uh, program. So we use it to, to simulate the workload. Um, the algorithm can be executed in both the user mode and the kernel mode. We will talk later. So uh, cyclic test, uh, the program cyclic test is a well-known one. Uh, and uh, how, how, how can it work? Cyclic test measure the delta from where is scheduled to Vega from when is actually is uh, get 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 a wake up. So the motivation of cycle test is trying to measure the the, the time timing delta. Uh, cycle test can use a high resolution timer, and the, the data gets uh, allow user to see the distribution of latency. So if you check the diagram. You, you can see some interest part. Uh, a long tail of latency shows that some paths in the kernel are taking a while to, to be preempt during critical session where the kernel cannot be interrupt. Um, Second is test itself is a good tool, but uh, we, we, we want to uh, mention is this, uh, uh, this this advantage is the loss of time information of the latency events, and there is no way to reconstruct. So we are thinking about an uh, efficient way to implement uh, the, the, the way to measure and the way we can reduce the latency eventually. Okay, so talking about providing tools for linear scheduling, we were mainly focusing on the overall performance of the throughput of the system. So traditionally, we use perf to understand which program utilizes the CPU resource. This is achieved by predictably sampling the CPU's PMU counters and use statistical analysis to understand the thing. The method works well for long-term CPU tests as <coughs> uh, with high throughput workload, but for real-time tests, we would like to get down to the microsecond level to every single point, understand every single point what the CPU is doing. In a paper, propose, proposed in a paper, Decker Voicet Core, uh, last year, Eurosys, they <coughs> have developed a technique which locks Next cycle's behavior, this allows us to trace the scheduling results in the microsecond level. This is accomplished by inserting profiling points or profiling hooks in the CPU in the linear scheduler, which will trigger every time at a point of interest. Typically, this would be the point which we, the scheduler state changes, like run queue increase, decrease, context switching, or the current executing process ID, or etc. The profile data is stored as a text file and can be fast and analysis later on. The original source, which the course has provided the uh, plotter which visualizes the run queue size of each core from in the form of heat map. For example, on the screen is a heat map of four core Intel i5 processor executing Hackbench. Profiling starts from the top left and goes through to the right. Every pixel means one 10 microsecond, and it wraps every 10 millisecond. By default, the profiler is triggered on the event of run queue increase, decrease, and balancing events and scheduling events in the scheduler. And of course, the scheduling hooks can be put at arbitrary points in the scheduler, so we can actually provide any kind of scheduled events. For example, we have modified it to profile the content switches of the in the scheduler. So on the screen is an example of a Cortex A9 running Hackbench, and every of the yellow, light yellow stages is where the CPU do content switches. Also, we have recorded the switch to PID, so we can use other tools to analyze 
every microsecond what the CPU is executing. <laughs> this is an example of the countless switch points of Cortex A9 running in stress and a uh, security test altogether. Um, the, we have zoomed it to a larger scale and on a blue box with rate stages is the security test entered the wrong queue and with the red box and the yellow stages where the security test has been counted switched and being executed. And that yellow stage is about 10 microsecond scale. And with other tools we have developed, we can anal analyze the time between security test, real time test entering the wrong queue and probably as a histogram and also the counter switch time probably as a histogram so we can know exactly how much time it takes for each interval the security test test enters schedules by the scheduler. And here's a schedule of the schedule duration where's the time between the tests and queue and put into execution. So the scheduler provide look enables to understand how text is treated by the scheduler in runtime under various load conditions. Okay, so let's back to the latency. Uh, how can we uh, reduce the latency after we measure? <coughs> so, uh, there are some uh, random tips to uh, um, improve uh, the latency, uh, reduce the latency on pre and RT. Um, preemption is disabled after acquired low spin lock, uh, which was uh, the the real implementation of spin lock in pre NRT. Uh, for pre num, uh, I mean the early vanilla kernel, uh, you can use a spin lock to spin until 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 you get lock. Uh, but for pre NRT. All spin lock was was replaced by uh, sleeping sleeping spin lock. So you have to use the low spin lock one instead of spin lock. And the preemption of for long time is a problem, um, which which implies higher priority tasks cannot run. And the pre pre NRT tries to make pre section preemptible. Uh, if you think about the detail when you trying to disable interrupt, um, you you need use uh, need a reschedule to check if higher priority tasks need CPU or not to break out of the preemption of section. And uh, uh, here, disable preemption uh, has an uh, effect of Locking CPU to other task, and uh, in the implementation in the deep internals of pre-NRT, Linux mutex utilizes OS Q lock, uh, which will spin in some conditions uh, with pre-NRT. Uh, here, OS Q means optimistic spinning for sleeping lock. Uh, so uh, if we think about the, the detail of IRQ, uh, again, IRQ thread, uh, because every IRQ context in pre NRT is actually a, a kernel thread, a normal kernel thread. And the IRQ thread are, are scheduled first in, first out task with a priority, uh, priority 50. Priority can be changed so that other real-time tasks, other more important tasks, can can have higher priority, and uh, you should always avoid unnecessary uh, spin lock spin lock IRQ save. Uh, for example, uh, there's a uh, implementation in CSS2, and uh, you can see the from from the the coalition. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. So that the sequence is a uh, spin lock IRQ save and uh, perform the low spin lock 
and then you do some up operation. Finally, you unlock. Low, low spin unlock and the spin unlock IQ restore. Uh, in pre NRT, uh, the semantics of spin lock already changed. Spin lock IRQ cell do not uh, disable interrupt in print RT4. If in, in, in this, so consequently, you should replace the low spin lock with the sequence, uh, like spin uh, disable IRQ, no, no sync IRQ, and uh, do the spin lock, which is sleep, sleeping lock. So you can avoid unnecessary uh, low spin lock IRQ cell to shorten the, uh, the latency because of a block. Also, we have to think about the uh, overhead of system call. Uh, there is a research in OSDI uh, about uh, six years ago. Uh, the idea is system call have uh, usually implement in the manner of synchronous mechanism. And uh, the Flex SC, the, the, the research of the NAND, uh, proposed a new implementation that implement uh, is, is sectionless system code in Linux kernel and uh, uh, re-implement re the P3 package in user label. And which translates the legacy synchronous system call uh, into the e sectionless one. Eventually, Flex SG uh, can improve the performance. Uh, you can see from the diagram, uh, from the side. So you, see, you can see uh, a patch, my SQL binder, and, uh, and so on. So location gets improved by, by this research. But however, the Flex SC is, is giving the impact of the compatibility. So we use another way. Uh, about almost uh, 20 years ago, there is an interesting hack uh, called kernel more Linux, which enabled the ability to execute user pro process in kernel more. And the benefit of running a user program in kernel more is user pro program can access kernel edge space directory. So you, you don't need to use a system, system call gate in order to uh, invoke the system call internals. You can directly invoke calls the function call since you get uh, everything in, in kernel. Um, which means user program can invoke system call very fast because it is unnecessary to switch between a kernel mode and a user mode. Uh, by using costly system, in, system interrupts or context switches. Unlike kernel, mo, kernel modules, uh, in kernel mode Linux, user programs are executed as a, a normal process except the previous level. So scheduling and the pageant are performed as, as usual. Although you, you might think it's too dangerous to do to, to such a thing, but it, in fact, it's safe uh, because uh, you, the, the process still gets isolated in, in, the, in, in kernel mode Linux. So uh, we will show you how we can use uh, more techniques uh, like PrintRT with, along with uh, kernel mode Linux in the case study. So let, let's think about the detail. So talking about the case study, we are using uh, these platforms. The first one is the Atera Cyclone 5 SOC development kit. Another one is the NXP IMS6Q Sabre SDB. Both are using Cortex-A9, one is two core, another is quad core, and memory is both one gigabyte of DDR3. The experiment configuration we are using is a build loop based system, and the kernel version is 4.4 and we have patched it with the print RT patches. 
And additional patches will apply to the wasted core patches and the KML pages, patches. Depends on the experiment we are, we are going to do, and I will explain later when we, we come to it. <laughs> the benchmark suit, as we mentioned later, is a cyclic test and the MC test. And for cyclic test, the arguments and the parameter given is given above. And both of these two test benches is run in kernel mode Linux, if possible, is as if kernel mode Linux is enabled in our kernel. For MC test is measuring the determinant of code execution time. It's developed to simulate a robot motion <coughs> control algorithm, which, as you know, it has mentioned earlier, it runs as a user-based program or a kernel mode margin kernel space. And you will output the execution time of each run. So for this is an example, on the left is a cycle test. And compared to MC test, it outputs every cycle's execution time. So we will learn from, what we learn from cyclic test is the jitter of the wake-ups. And from MC test, we're going to learn about the execution time's jitter. Oops. OK. So these are our experiments and measurements. The first one is how kernel monitors benefits the real-time performance. And we are going to measure the SMB piece schedulability of uh, linear systems and to look after this, there is anything we need to care about when <coughs> using Linux as a real-time operating system. And we are to going to talk about showing the inter-arrival time and finally the schedule duration. So first, kernel mode Linux impact on real-time performance. We run this experiment on MS6 and uh, we have set up the for CPU one is isolated and set it as tickless, which means there will be no time interrupts on CPU one. And we have used the technique of cache lockdown, which locks all level two cages to the first CPU, uh, CPU one. And the load is a combination of hackbench and the netperf. The test bench we use is MC test. And for user space MC test, we can find out that this is not running in kernel mode Linux. The user space MC test, we can see a lot of jitters and spikes. And for kernel space MC test, it's much more stable. The reason of this is because the impact of system calls. The cost is very high for each system call. So the user space MC test are generating a lot of spikes during its execution. If we move user space MC test into kernel mode Linux, we will see that the spikes has gone away and the overall execution time is very stable and is comparable to the kernel space MC test. So we can see how kernel mode Linux improves the latency on system calls. And now I'm going to talk about this SMP schedulability of the uh, pre-RT patched kernel, Linux kernel. We are running this on Cyclone 5 stack, and the, the load is threads, and the number of threads is there. So we can see that the whole length, which it wraps, is 10 milliseconds, and for, by default, the uh, Linux scheduler is set to reschedule and balance the loads every 10 milliseconds. So this short burst of tasks and context switches will not be rebalanced and leaving a lot of gaps which are showing green, which is only one text running inside the CPU, comparing to another CPU is running over five tasks. And for the Wesley core patches, it's not going to help with this with this because it does not alert the scheduler rebalances time scope, so it still rebalance every 10 milliseconds. This is considered okay for long-term high throughput workload because after some time the performance will amortize and the throughput will still be good. But for real-time tasks like the Cyclic test, we can find out that cyclic test is being scheduled and wake up every time on the an overloaded call. And as it, the other call is much more 
free for resources. And this could bring unwanted overhead to a real-time system. And later we have measured the scalability impact from kernel mode Linux. And as kernel mode Linux is targeted to reduce system cost overhead, so actually there's no much difference between the difference between patched and non-patched kernels. So short inter arrival time. We have able to catch the events of schedule in uh, microsecond level. So we have captured some event like leaks, which is two texts with very, very short inter arrival time enter the queue. And this Two texts is the first is the timer RQ of the system, and another one is the security test, main test. And you can see that at certain time, the two match almost together and enters the wrong queue and cause some overhead to the scheduler. Also, this has another uh, showcase is the thread of security test and the real time test of the security test. And same, in some times they will come very close together under a couple of other 10 to 20 microseconds. They almost enter the long queues together. Yes. So the benefits of visualizing test inter arrival time is that it could cause ISQ button half or text delay. We would like to produce a system with constant and rather large inter-arrival time, which will lower the schedule overhead and lower the system's uncertainty. Finally, I would like to talk about the schedule duration, who is the time. Schedule takes a scheduled and queued task for context switching. The graphs on the top is a cycle test running with one minute second interval. Uh, it's a hard, bit hard to see. Uh, it's context switch every yellow st stages, and the system is running with no load. The graph below shows the scheduled duration for each cycle of cycle test. The orange bars means that the cycle test is the only one task in the wrong queue, and for the red ones, it means there are over two tests in the wrong queue, so the scheduler has to pick among them. We can find out that the schedule duration is pretty low, as low as usually is below 10 microseconds. And for the histogram, we can find out that the mo yes, it's mostly below 10 microseconds, and the maximum is about 20 microseconds. And for the next one, we are going to run with a mail load, which is a stretch with three CPU threads, and again with cyclic test with my millisecond interval. And we can find out that still the schedule duration is pretty low, as low as about five microseconds with some spikes. And the bars are all red because it's always sharing a call with the a stress task. From his histogram view, we can also find the result that the maximum of the schedule duration is 16 microseconds. And this seems kind of interesting as we run it again with heavy load, which is straight with eight CPU threads, cycle test one millisecond interval. We can find out that it's a lot of context switches, and the schedule duration is not as stable as previous results. It varies from 10 microseconds to 30 microseconds, it's, and it's not a constant value. From a histogram view, we can find out that this creates another peak with about 27 microseconds. And the maximum has gone all the way up to 34 microseconds. Also, we have found that not only heavy load will cause increased schedule duration, but also sh short burst tags. In the above example, CPU 0 is executing kernel mode MC test, and CPU 1 is executing the security test real time thread and the uh, main thread together. And when the two security test threads come 
into the scheduler with a rather short inter interval time, the scheduler duration of this real time text will rise about double the time when it's running solo in the CPU. And in the histogram view, we can find out that the maximum has gone all the way up to the 33 microseconds scale. So we have observed that when the scheduler and queue the high priority test into the wrong queue, it will require a period of scheduler duration before switching it for execution. Scheduler duration between entering wrong queue and counter switch will be most at most at 35 microseconds, depends on the load. And the scheduler Linux kernel is using guarantees and O1 on searching which text to be executed. But after identifying the next test for execution, scheduler will still require some extra time, which would vary with the load in the scheduling run queue. The run queue is scheduling. The shorter the inter arrival time, the wider the scheduler duration distribution will spread. So we have evaluated the real time behavior of Linux by profiling Linux schedule and measuring the latency of various variants. And intensive interrupts can cause long OS latencies due to the design of the interrupt processing mechanism in Linux. We propose new tools to visualize test scheduling in fine grained scale as microsecond scale. This enables us not only focusing on the interrupt latency, but also schedule duration, locks, and iterate with. And it would soon be highly desirable to combine the existing techniques, for example, Chromonius isolated CPU tickless kernel to improve the text responsiveness under various target application characteristics on top of pre-MRT. Uh, here's our references. So uh, if you check the, the page of reference, uh, you, can, you can see uh, I collect some uh, EOC talk and the related one. Uh, so you can check uh, the first one by Stephen Loster uh, talking about uh, what is the real-time system and how pre-end RT is actually implemented. And the next one is quite interesting. Uh, the, the guy from Hitachi, uh, Give a, a real case uh, for for the so for the study the real time property in in Linux uh, yes about uh, three years ago, and uh, the third one is uh, talk, to, talking about the, the real time throughput. Uh, yes, the talk was old uh, about uh, five years ago, uh, but still is essential in in the, in the the view of design. And the, the last two, two one, uh, the first is uh, the Eurosys uh, paper, and the last one is OSDI, uh, which I, I mentioned earlier about how to reduce the overhead of the system code. And uh, for the uh, application, I mean, uh, the, the tool we measure the latency uh, we men mentioned before uh, will be in open source. You, you can check out the GitHub link uh, after the slide is get uh, update because uh, the one you download from the EOC website is the preliminary one, and we will update uh, another one um, mentioning the GitHub link and the reference set up. So you can uh, prepare your own uh, profile data and visualize using the tool. So do you have any question? Okay, the question is uh, which kernel command line, kernel parameter are you, we use, right? In your kernel configuration. Yes, okay. The building configurations, yes. okay. Uh, we use uh, printrt and uh, uh, use uh, the configure preempt full, and uh, we disable some uh, some not necessary 
debug driver and uh, using uh, take this kernel or NAT and uh, isolate CPU. So you can use a CPU set to sp specify the uh, IRQ affinity. And also we use a uh, customized, uh, use our customized memory allocator for, for the higher level applications. Uh, and we, I mean the MC test, our Loba control simulation model. So uh, other things are, are, are usual, as, as you might know. Uh, uh, there's uh, the original author has a website which publish these patches, yes, and also is uh, paper discussion about the performance and how they how they implement it in x x d six and ARM chips. Uh, so there are two questions. Uh, the, the, the last one is um, how can we uh, measure the latency impact of uh, top, top health and butt health IRQ, right? Uh, okay, so uh, let me answer this one first. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we, since we are in the, in, in, in the perspective of the microscope view, so everything, every, everything is gets very small. So we have to use uh, some uh, efficient way like uh, F-trace to figure out the, the impact in the top, top half. So uh, the, you, we, ha we have to figure out the, the the execution time in specific in the top half and the lack, the potential lack. Otherwise, we could not measure how the sequence of our but half task scheduled by case of IRQD. Okay. Uh, what is your first question? The, the periodic task? Yeah. Okay. Rather than periodic task, is your measurement for because the task is generally applicable to non-cyclic task? Not, not using cyclic task? Is your, is your approach is applicable to non-cyclic task? Ah, okay. Okay, uh, the question is about uh, how can we generate uh, work group reflecting the re actual system, right? Okay, uh, the, this is a good question because um, we are always um, uh, facing the problem that cyclic test is too simple to, and it's too naive. And uh, uh, so uh, that's the reason why we want to implement our our own uh, test bench. So uh, you can see from the, the diagram, this is a part uh, many uh, produced by uh, Delta Electronics in, in Taiwan. And it's a, a scalar low, low bar control. And, and the, the most algorithm, uh, it, the most algorithm implement is shared in real product and uh, the MC test. 
So we use a real algorithm to measure to be as a simulation target uh, as a workload. So uh, that is an, an, a not a good, I, I, I think it is a not always a good mechanism to use this approach, but we, we think it's a real case. So uh, you might use, you might think of a more, more stress, more reflective ways, but, but this is the reason why we <laughs> want to talk here, because um, we are facing the same problems. Excuse me, can you repeat again? The flex SC. Flex SC. <laughs> I found a paper on it on the circuit board, but I didn't see any discussion on LKML or the kernel name on this. I didn't know if it had been submitted or. So you are asking if there is anywhere people are discussing about, yeah. discussing about a flex SC's paper? Yeah. yeah. He's asking anywhere if somebody is discussing about the flex SC's paper ah, you mentioned okay. earlier. Uh, I think uh, th there are few discussions about the OSDI paper, uh, but you can check the hack news. Uh, I checked la la last night. Uh, there are few discussions about that. Uh, and it is, uh, in fact, a early prototype. So, uh, it's not stable, so that's the reason why we use Kernel Linux. Kernel Linux is already verified for more than 10 years. And uh, the impact of Kernel Linux is smaller, but the performance of Kernel Linux is not quite good compared with uh, the OSDI research paper. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think, um, okay, it's time, time's up. Okay, uh, thanks again for your attention. Uh, thank you. Thank you.